Who knows? Maybe he is really going to start a new platform where he is going to pay people to spread the good message of conservatism. And whether they get blocked or not, they're going to get paid. Who knows? All right. Welcome back to the party, everybody. I am your host, Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of Common Sense. Let's party. So, in our live streams, we've been talking a lot about the Crowder versus Daily Wire uh, fiasco. And uh, I just saw a clip from uh, Patrick Beck David on the Value Tainment podcast, and he was kind of talking about it. And I've been saying that I want a real, real business mind to break this down. So I figured let's check it out and see what they got to say. Some people are asking a question about Stephen Crowder. Let me tell you guys what happened with Stephen Crowder. Stephen Crowder. We had in the past tried to get him on the podcast, Rob. I think we reached out a couple times in the past. Correct. And then after the video he did, calling out Daily Wire, uh, his camp reached out saying Stephen Crowder would like to come on the podcast. We said, yeah, no problem. We scheduled for a Wednesday to be on the okay. podcast. And uh, that uh, uh, Monday morning or Sunday, uh, we got an email saying, well, a, a family emergency took place and he can't be here, which we said, listen, family emergency happens. We understand it. Uh, uh, you know, maybe we can do it earlier or a different day. No, he can't do it. It's a major family emergency. He can't be there. No problem. Then uh, what mm -hmm. was very uh, uh, interesting is that even though there was a family emergency, that Monday after the family emergency was on Tim Pool's podcast. Where is okay. I did not know that. So he was supposed to appear on this podcast days before and the or days after uh, he was on Timcast and the day of or the day before, he was on Timcast. He canceled with Valuetainment. I wonder why he would do that. Okay. So uh, you go on Tim Pool's podcast, but you tell us there's a family emergency that happens specifically on Wednesday, but you can do, because typically when it's a family emergency, you may be taking a few days off. So here's all I will say. Guys, we've dealt with presidents. We've dealt with billionaires. We've dealt with uh, uh, the athletes, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Hart. We've dealt with like AAA listers which everybody that becomes an A-listers, everybody is typically doing what? What can we do for you? Comedy, hey, all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we pay attention to that because as you get bigger in the world in whatever industry you're doing, it is all about relationships. We've never had a person that cancels like that and just says, hey, you know, and then later on the email comes, oh, we can do it right now. Maybe later on, you'll be the first for us to talk. And we don't play those games. We don't like those games. So there is a part of it where you think some of the critis criticism that he got, if it was real or not, we don't know. Again, I've never spoken to him. I've never had a call with him. I've never had a sit down with him. We were more than happy to uh, uh, to have a uh, civil conversation here to see what took place with a guy like that. But for those of you that are fans of his, that were expecting him to be here, they canceled last minute due to family emergency and still went on Tim Pool podcast on that Monday instead of a Wednesday. So for those of you who are not uh, regular live stream viewers and didn't catch the streams where we're talking about this, basically my position on this was originally I was very much on Crowder's side because the original video he was talking about some nameless company uh, that was doing predatory contracts and stuff. But he was talking about looking out for the little guy, the young creators. I'm like, oh, that's me. All right, word up. Then uh, Jeremy Boring of the Daily Wire comes out, reads the entire contract, and was like, um, that's not exactly right what Crowder said. And then, you know, they go back and forth and it's really a difference of Daily Wire is a company doing business as usual and Crowder is an individual looking for a business who is uh, uh, focused on getting Crowder's message across more than the, the, the aspect of business. And so I was like, eh, I mean, I get where both of them are coming from, but it's, uh, you know, Crowder doesn't really have uh, much of a leg to stand on. Now that I'm hearing this, now that I know that he recorded his uh, friend in a phone call that was supposed to be just like a, uh, how was Christmas? How's the family? All that. I'm getting further and further and further away from thinking that Crowder, uh, you know, had the best of intentions. We're not sitting here saying we know what the emergency was or not. I'm just telling you, I'm not accustomed to a family emergency taking place. Yet you go to a different podcast on a Monday. So that is for the people that are asking about Crowder. Now, having said that, uh, James O'Keefe was scheduled to be here today. James and I are texting right now each other. Shout out to James O'Keefe. If you have not checked out the most recent thing he did with Pfizer, please, please, please go check that out. We are trying to get him to be on the podcast tomorrow. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. 
If James O'Keefe is on this podcast, as soon as I can, we are going to do a live stream about that. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you are there. It's exactly like this. Let's party. You know. Let me give you a uh, this disclaimer so everybody knows. I don't have a relationship with Ben Shapiro. Him and I have done one interview together. It was fascinating. The guy's a brilliant mind, but we don't text. We don't talk. We haven't spoken to him. No conversations. The same with Candace Owens. The same with Jeremy Boring. Any of that stuff. So what that means to me is that he is, he doesn't have a dog in this fight. He's not coming to bat for anybody. He's just giving his opinion. There's been zero communication with them at all. An invitation to the podcast, zero. None of that stuff in the last however long it's been, we've had zero conversations with those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're very necessary. I think they're very talented. I thought Jeremy Boring to go through the entire contract was uh, extremely bold, extremely confident to do it. Uh, you know, you and that that's Ben Shapiro's partner for those because he's not a household name. Everyone yeah. knows Shapiro. No, no, but Candace he Owens. is okay. a household name in this space. The Got guy it. is a heavyweight, legit a type of a guy that you would want to have as a president, COO, C suite, CEO. He's mm -hmm. the guy. He used to be partners, I believe, years ago with a guy named Zach Levi. And what he's talking about, how much of a, uh, I don't know if he said the word behemoth, but how much you want a Jeremy Boring type in that uh, position is why the Daily Wire is doing so well. But if he is a, a typical business guy, then you can't expect that he's going to do business unlike a business guy. Zach Levi is the underdog movie of Kurt Warner. Zach Levi wow, is wow, wow. what he called the, the Shazam guy, the good looking guy. Yeah, so th this is not a lightweight guy. This guy right here. He went after Gillette in a way that was freaking okay. epic. Well, yeah. So now. As you were. Yeah. If you have not seen the Jeremy Razors commercial, Google it as soon as this video is over. Yeah, yeah so so both of these guys. And by the way, on the other side, Steven Crowder's is maybe uh, at the top of the list of, like, who Bill Maher is at the top of the left, probably Crowder is at the top of the right to be the comedian doing what he does. So 100% mm -hmm. agree. Now, even though Daily Wire is bigger, in terms of a single name, Steven Crowder is way bigger than Ben Shapiro or, uh, uh, mm, mm, I mean, they might rival each other, uh, but all of the other names under the Daily Wire, there is no one even close to uh, Crowder besides uh, Ben Shapiro. Crowder is a absolute, some will put him at Crowder. the top above everybody. Uh, on the comedy and political side, debating anyone. He's, he's fantastic. What was the thing? What he uh, he's, he, I learned about Change Crowder when changed my mind. Yeah. Changed my mind. So, exactly. And that's, the, that's why I say that he's bigger because even people who don't pay attention to news at all, anybody who pays attention at all knows who Stephen Crowder is, knows who Ben Shapiro is. But there are so many people who don't pay attention to any of this stuff at all, but they do know the Change My Mind meme. And that is why I think Crowder is a bigger name than uh, Shapiro. Actually. Yeah, so th there, there's that part, and uh, there's a massive, uh, but here's what's going to happen. When a Crowder makes a claim like that, yeah, and you record, and then Ben Shapiro goes after, why would you record your friend, and you know how, who's going to trust to do business with anybody when you record somebody? Everybody that walks into a room with Steven Crowder is going to be like, this guy's probably recording the conversation. That's on everybody's mind now moving forward oh, yep. when you do something like that, so it's tough. And that's, what, that's exactly what I was referring to when I was saying that at whatever industry you're in, at a certain level, it's all about relationships. And if you don't have the ability to build those relationships because of your prior actions, it ain't going to be fun. When you do business with someone like that, it's chance. So that's what the call out is on the other side. So here's a part. Yeah. Here's a part. Steven Crowder now, when you go out there and you declare your intentions as publicly as he did, mm -hmm. you best back it up. You best back it up. So here's the problem. Before he goes into that, that is that that, that is the perfect way uh, to frame it. I never in a million years could have said it that way because I am very sympathetic to Crowder's position. It's just that I don't think he's going about it the right way. And so what uh, uh, PBD here is saying that if you if you're gonna play these cards, you better back it up. Uh, that's exactly exactly how I feel uh, uh, about all of this. If Crowder is just, you know, doing this as a money grab or is, you know, kind of flexing and doesn't really do anything with it. Well, that's a lot of respect lost in, in my eyes. But who knows? Maybe he is really going to start a new platform where he is going to take uh, pay people to spread the good message of conservatism. And whether they get blocked or not, they're going to get paid. Who knows? Who knows? Tim Pool over the Cast Castle, they do it. Not to say that Crowder's any kind of Tim, but... It's possible. So 
You better back it up. Very well said. March of 09, I'm sitting down with a man named Bill. I told him after dinner we had with George Will, I want to announce my mission statement that's saving America and bringing back the free enterprise system and hope to American families. Nice. He says, this is the mission statement of the company. He says, yes. He says, don't do it. I said, why is that? He says, if you do this, how are you going to be doing it? I said, well, I'm going to work with middle-income families. I'm going to work with minorities. I'm going to teach them about sales, business, capitalism, finance, insurance, how money works. I'm going to help these guys have the mentality of a winner, competitor, discipline, why immigrants come here, the capitalistic uh, mentality, the immigrant mentality. That's what we're going to be doing. Sounds good to me. What's wrong with that? He says, if you do that, who's going to be coming to it? I'm planning on having the, uh, the presidents come to our events, senators, governors, people who understand finance, economists, comptrollers, billionaires. I want comedians, Kobe. I want all these guys to come. He says, here's my suggestion to you. If you say something like that from stage in front of the pulpit, okay, which the event was called Saving America, Doing the Impossible, I was dressed as a... Uh, 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 George Washington. You can type in George Washington, Patrick, but David, maybe a picture will show up on Google. <laughs> and I get up and I said, we're going to be doing this. He says, don't do it unless you're hundred percent committed to it. Hmm. I said, what do you mean? He says, don't do it unless if you're hundred percent committed to it. Uh, 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 a video of it is somewhere around there that you can find if you can pause it and not have the audio. That's a uh, fast forward a little bit, fast forward a little bit, Late fast forward a little right bit. There. That's me and Jen right there. By the way. Pause it. <laughs> Literally, that's me and Jen right there. Okay. So here's the thing. You are he the says, tallest, brownest George brownest. Washington I've ever seen. So he tells me, he tells me, <laughs> by the way, he t by the way, the year before I was dressed as George C. Scott, giving the patent speech for five minutes, that which is, is a pretty so epic speech. Okay. I hope whoever's got to send it my way. I want to see it. It's been 15, 16 years, but Crowded, he yeah. says, don't. Say that mission statement unless you 100% mean it hmm. and you're going to go out there and advance towards it. He scares the crap out of me. I step away. I don't announce it. I say, I'm not doing it. Oh, really? 30 days goes by, 60 days. I can't sleep at night. I'm so worried about it. Then the day comes, July 17th, that event. I get up and I announce the vision, mission, what we're going to be doing in July of 09. Okay. I announce it to everybody. Everybody is flipping fire. This is JW Marriott in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fired up. You know who's not fired up? I'm not fired up. Because I went to sleep saying, holy shit, mm -hmm. I better freaking do it. <laughs> yeah. So then you see David Walker, the Comptroller General of U.S., comes to the event, and I interview. Then you see we bring Santorum. Then President shows up. Then Kobe shows up. Then Kevin Sick. Hart shows up. Then everybody's done. Then the events goes from 500 people, 2,000 people, to 2,000 people, and 5,000 people. MGM Grand Arena, you were there. We're putting concerts with Nelly, with oh, Nicky man. Jam, with Sebastian Maniscalco, with Mario Lopez as the MC, with Shaq, all this stuff. And then it turned into what it is today. Mm -hmm. And now people say, well, what Pat said he did in the insurance space, this is not public information. This is in the insurance space on what I did. And then Value Tame kind of made some of this stuff be public. Crowder, has to back it up now. And it sucks. Every night he goes to sleep, everybody's saying, where is it? Who are you signing? What are you doing? You just put yourself on blast. You put Daily Wire on blast. Who are you signing next? Who are you giving a contract to next? What are you going to be doing? That's where he's at. So I, I that, again, blowing my mind at how well he understands all of this and how, uh, how badly I needed somebody who has a mind like Patrick Bat David to uh, explain all this to me. And so now I, I know exactly where I stand with all this is that, OK, I'm waiting for Crowder to back himself up, back up his words. If he doesn't, well, that's one situation. And if he does, well, that's a completely different situation. If he does it, guess what you got to do to Crowder? Salute. If he doesn't yep. do it, you got to say Daily Wire was right. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. Wow. And welcome to the world of competition because it freaking sucks. He's been in it for a while and he's dominated as a talent. Yeah. But it's a very different game to go from a talent to running a company. So, I mean, that's a great, great, great analysis. I mean, obviously, he's a much better business mind than I am. But helping me figure that out is really big because this is the space that I pay attention to. And I want to know, are these people people I can trust? Is this information, information that I can trust? What did you guys think of Patrick Bet David's breakdown of uh, Crowder's situation? Do you agree? Whose side are you on? Are you on Crowder's side? Are you on Daily Wire's side? Do you not care and you just want good news? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for partying with me. I am your host, Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of Common Sense. Until next time, guys, I am out of here. Peace.